out of here. There we go. All right. And uh, come into the house of the Lord and worship together. It's great to be here with you. Just a few announcements before we begin. Um, There'll be a deacons meeting tomorrow at 7 in the fellowship hall. And then um, church council meeting the following Monday. The August newsletter is available out in the foyers. You want to grab one of those. And um, if you have a, a prayer request you want to add it to the list, um, of course you have this tear-off tab in your bulletin. You can write it on there and uh, drop it in the offering plate uh, as well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer before as we begin. Father, we're grateful for this chance to be able to worship together, especially in this time where we're going through this pandemic and being physically present is something we're not often able to do. So we're grateful for the blessing of the physical presence here, but also the video technology that allows people to gather with us from afar. We ask that as we begin our time of worship, that we would tune our hearts towards you and we would be open to hearing what you have for us today. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Good morning. Let's stand and sing to the Lord. Hymn number 354, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms. Next hymn this morning is 355, Trusting Jesus.
want to take a few minutes to pray together. And, you know, uh, someone asked we, when I do prayer requests now, I'm not using a lot of names. And I, I want you to know that's for their privacy, um, just because this is on video. And, but if you have a prayer request that you are comfortable with that being broadcast and you want it shared on a Sunday morning, you can share that with me and I'll, I'll speak it from here. Um, but of course, the prayer list is available and you can go through that and see some of the needs in our church. I do want to let you know um, this morning, early this morning, Christine Campbell did pass away. Um, uh, Phyllis called me this morning and said that it was peaceful and she is with uh, her Lord Jesus. And so uh, we'll let you know more as, as we have arrangements and things, but I wanted to share that with you. Let's go before the Lord this morning. Father, these um, difficult struggles we go through, the loss of loved ones and the separation from loved ones and people in facilities and hospitals that can't uh, have visitors and these day-by-day struggles that fill our prayer list, these people that we care for deeply. And in these moments, we know that our hope is that we can turn to you for you're the God who cares, the God who is with us, the God who loves us. And we ask for your mercy and your grace in the midst of these circumstances, comfort in times of trial and healing in times of need. We ask all these things in the name of Jesus. Amen.
the God who won't let go. So when you're on your knees, an answer seems so far away. You're not alone, stop holding on and just be held. Your world's not falling apart, it's falling into a place. I'm on the throne, stop holding on and just be held. Just be Find your rest in the arms of the God who won't let go. He's on the throne, so stop holding on and just be held. The great reminder from that song and, and a, this blessing we have that we can not only worship a God like this, but that we have, can have a relationship with this God. And that's a blessing. But it's hard to let go and just be still. <laughs> uh, chief struggler right here in letting go and just being still and hard to relax in the midst of trials and leave it to the Lord. And the passage I want us to look at this morning is hopefully a good reminder in, in looking and meditating on this a little bit and studying it. And it's, it's perhaps a familiar passage, but here in Proverbs chapter three, uh, verses 1 through 12 contain these, these sets of commands and promises. We're going to be looking at a few of those in verses 5 through 8, in, in including verses 5 and 6, which, which may already be familiar. But hopefully we can look with some fresh eyes and new context and, and see what the Lord has for us this morning. I encourage you to follow along as I read Proverbs chapter 3, 5 through 8. Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. Be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord, and turn away from evil. It will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Let's pray. Father, as we come into your word this morning, we just ask that you would open our eyes to see what you have for us that our hearts will be open to your spirits as we, as we listen and learn this morning. In that name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You know, notice through this passage that it's kind of divided up into the series of commands and promises. The commands come first, and then a promise kind of comes with it. And verse 5 begins with one of those commands. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not lean on your own understanding. And this word trust is the key to the whole thing. I'm giving it to you up front. Not making you, making, making you wait until the end. There it is. Trust is the key. And trust is essentially relying on someone or something to do what's necessary. Right? Like, you've got a chair at home. It's super comfy. You trust that chair is going to hold you when you sit down. Right? And... The struggle with trust, though, is that it deals with the unknown. You're trusting that, that that item or that person can handle what you're asking it to do, but it hasn't done it yet. The task hasn't been accomplished yet. And so the, the struggle in trusting is that we try to maybe not trust and we maybe don't know how it's going to be accomplished, or maybe in the chair example, you've got a rickety little chair that you gently sit down in, like, well, I hope it makes it this time, right? Chair hasn't held you up yet. You're going to trust in it, but it hasn't done it yet. Once you've sat down 
and you get cozy, well then, all right, you can trust easier. But before it's been accomplished, it's our tendency when we're thinking about trust, our tendency is to try to control things along the way as best we can. Let me give you another example. Imagine you're riding in a car and your driver is a brand new teenage driver who just got their license yesterday. It's at night, in a thunderstorm, and there's a lot of traffic. <clears throat> Getting to see like looks of panic around the room, apprehension, right? That is trust, okay? But our tendency though, in that moment, is to not offer as much of the trust as maybe the driver would appreciate. Maybe you can't see the driver's mirrors and so you frantically look around trying to see what's going on. Grab for that handle over the window as if that's gonna do any good. And then perhaps even in some of those moments, you stomp your foot hard on the imaginary brake on the floorboard as if there's something you could possibly do to control this car, this driver. But now imagine a role reversal and you're the teenager or the child without a license who's sitting in the car in the same scenario with their adult driver. And you're sitting there thinking to yourself, my goodness, I am so glad that's not me right now. The thunderstorm in a crowded city, crowded highway at night, you can't see anything. It's you get the three-year-old crying in the back and you're just sitting there going, glad I'm not the one having to drive this right now. And you can sit back and you can trust in the driver to handle it and take care of it. And that's trust. And that's not leaning on your own understanding, like this passage talks about. To trust in the Lord, but not lean on your own understanding. It's the kind of trust that God's calling us to have in him. The kind of trust that recognizes that he has all the understanding in the world. We have very little the kind of trust that recognizes that God's in control and we're not. And thinking through this and thinking through times where we fail to trust in the Lord, and I, I tried to crystallize this, and I kind of put it in two different big categories. The first is when we try to predict the future, which obviously we can't do. If we could predict the future, we could make some bank. I'm just saying, like, we could make some good money predicting the future, but we can't. But we try to anyway. We, we let ourselves sit and spin on those what-if questions. Like, what if this happens? What if that happens? You got this circumstance, that circumstance. And we try to piece it all together and figure out what's going to happen instead of waiting to respond in each moment. We, when we try to prepare for every eventuality, we try to make it so that nothing bad ever happens. If I could just figure out what's going to happen, I could stop it. The second kind of big category is when we do the same thing, but instead of into the future, we look into the past. And we ask those same what-if questions. What if I had done this differently? What if that had been different? What if this circumstance had changed? Then, what? Everything would have been fine. But the thing is that we can't actually know that. We can't look back and tell what would have happened in different circumstances any better than we can look forward in the future and tell what will happen in different circumstances. And there's only one who knows what everything that has happened, everything that will happen, and that's God. And so when we try to take our own understanding, which is limited at best, and we try to lean on that to figure out what to do and how to do it and how life should look and the best path to take, then we're leaning on our own understanding instead of leaning on the Lord. And now, I want to be clear. I'm not talking about good preparation. Like, you got to prepare. Like, retirement is coming, folks. Or maybe it's already there. Like, you got to think about that and, like, plan for it. If you're still working, you should save. Like, plan for what's coming, Right? I'm not talking about looking back into the past and learning from our mistakes. Oh man, I really messed that one up. Let me not do that again, right? This is different. What I'm talking about here is when we fail to trust in the Lord because we think we can make things perfect. 
And we feel that we can fill that role of working all of the things that we want to work out into the way we want them to be. When we think we've gained a complete understanding of all circumstances, and we think that our understanding is sufficient to get us where we need to be. That, that's this leaning on our own understanding that this passage is talking about. This passage is saying, don't lean on your own understanding. The passage teaches that we have to trust in the Lord. We have to rely on his understanding because only the Lord has complete understanding and knowledge. Looking into verse 6, we see another component of this. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make straight your paths. So after we've acknowledged that we can't rely on our own understanding, right? we can't tell the future, we can't tell what the past would have been if things had been different, then we have to acknowledge that we need to look to the one that we can rely on. Think back to the driving scenarios from before. I'm going to come back to that a couple of times. It seems clever to me. Anyway, maybe it's not. I hope it helps. Our tendency, although we may not want to admit it, is to think of ourselves as the adult in the car. To think of ourselves as either the adult in the passenger seat, anxiously gripping the handle, glancing around, kicking at the floorboard, absolutely convinced that God is going to get it wrong. Or we think of ourselves perhaps as the adult in the driver's seat, with the sleeping passenger taking a nap, feeling quite certain we've got it all taken care of, life is good, and quite content to let God just take a nap until we need something. But the challenge of this passage is to acknowledge that God is God and we are not, that the Lord is in control and we are not, and to acknowledge the Lord in our lives. The challenge is to realize that in our little driving scenario, he's the adult and we're the teenager that probably needs to not drive the car in that circumstance, maybe let the adult take over. To realize that we desperately need the Lord's instruction and guidance, to realize the only control we have over the car is what they let us have in the first place. To acknowledge we probably need to let God drive because that's the only way we're gonna make it through and we acknowledge the Lord in everything, and we dig deeper, and we realize that everything we have is from the Lord. That all the good things in our life are a gift from the Lord. That he sustains us and holds the world together by his power. And we acknowledge that we didn't earn the right to be blessed like that. Rather, the opposite is true. The Bible says that the wages of our sin is, is death. That's what we deserve. That's what we've earned. But the Lord has come to us and said, I love you. And I love you more to, than to allow that to happen without giving you the opportunity to come in faith. Because we have this God who loves us and blesses us, not because of who we are and what we've done, but because of who he is and what he has done. And so when life doesn't look the way we want it to, when things go wrong and the effects of sin weigh down on us or we wake up and find ourselves in the middle of a worldwide pandemic, we can look to the God who saves. We can trust in him acknowledging that even just waking up this morning and being able to have the ability to drive and come is a gift that we're able to be here and, or we're able to watch this on video, all of those little things are gifts that we can be thankful for. And we can all throughout our life acknowledge the goodness and power of God in the circumstances, working things for our good and his glory. We can look to the cross to see his love. The Casting Crown song talked about that. When your eyes are on the storm, it seems like things are going horribly wrong and God is not there. But when you look to the cross, you know that he loves you. When you wonder if God has the ability or the power to affect circumstances, we can look only as far as the empty grave to see that indeed he is powerful. And we know that we are safe in his arms. And in that assurance... As we acknowledge the Lord in that assurance, we can lean not on our own understanding, but rather lean on the Lord. And then look into verse 7 and 8, because we see the promise coming. 
that when we do those things, this is the promise. It says, it will be healing to your flesh and refreshment to your bones. Your version may say strength instead of refreshment, but what a grand promise this is. That this, this strength and refreshment that we need to get through life comes from God. And you can think to a time when a stressful situation had been resolved. You know, like you've been really stressed about it and then it's like dealt with. And then you can just sit back and relax. Like that time that I thought I was going to fail that class at the end of senior year of college and I was going to have to tell my dad that that was going to be a thing. And I passed like just, it was, folks, it was close. But I passed, and then it was done, and I could relax. That weight lifts. That is the type of refreshment it's talking about. But though that well, the example I gave is attributed to something, just a life circumstance where the, the circumstance brought it. But this passage is speaking about our faith in the Lord can bring that same peace and that same refreshment. Notice that it's not a promise that things are going to go the way we want. It's not a promise that things are going to work out perfectly. But it's a promise that we can trust God and be freed from doing it ourselves. Remember I said we're not the adult driving the car. (laughs) We're the teenager or perhaps even sometimes the toddler in the back seat who has really just no idea what's going on at that role sometimes, or just going through life going, I'm going to kind of take this one step at a time. And you're in those circumstances, and think about when you're going for a ride with someone, and they're driving, and they say, yeah, sure, I'll take you over to the library, but on the way, we're going to stop and get the dry cleaning, and i got to pick up some extra flour at the grocery store. And you're like, are you kidding me? Look down at your watch, and you're like, all right, let's go. Or you tell somebody you want to go to Walmart and they say, no, 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 we're going to go to Target. Target's better. It's further away, but it's better. And you're like, yeah, but I, I wanted to go to Walmart because it's faster and it was easier and it just, you'd just be done. But remember, we're not the adult in the car. We're the kid. We're the ones that submit to our Heavenly Father and follow Him. And when He says that Target is better, proverbially speaking, of course, we, we listen, we go on these detours, but it's okay because we have trust in our Lord. We have trust that even on the things that the detours we don't expect or the things we weren't too excited about or the frustrations that we have, that he's going to use those circumstances and work them for our good, but also know that it's, he's going to work them for his glory And he promises that no matter what happens, none of those things can ever tear us out of his hand. Nothing that could ever happen on this earth can take away the salvation that we have in Jesus. Nothing can take us away from our eternal hope that we look to. And so in that, we find this release of feeling like we have to do it all ourselves. And the pressure can come off and acknowledge that it's not up to us to control everything. We can't do it anyway. It's not, we acknowledge that God's in control and we understand that God loves us and he cares for us and he has the power to bring about the things that we need, including salvation. And in that we find peace. Peace comes in two forms. The the first is this guarantee of eternal life to know that our eternity is secure and you can be at peace with that. Next week, we'll get back into Acts and we'll look and see and the peace that some of these early disciples had and the boldness that they had in the face of adversity and that it was rooted in the peace they had in knowing that the worst these people could do is kill them and they would go to heaven. As Paul says, to live is Christ, to die is gain. But the second piece is how this trust in the Lord helps us get through circumstances. Helps us be able to walk through the storm knowing that we're not alone. Knowing that we can be calm in the midst of it to to resist the pull of the endless what-if questions. And 
rest in the promise that God gives us that he will give us grace sufficient for the day. That we can seek first the kingdom of God and he will provide what we need. Because he is God and we are not. Because he loves us, cares for us, and is always with us. And we can find our rest and refreshment in a life following Jesus as Lord. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the blessings of these promises. Thank you for the teaching that helps us to get there. But Lord, we acknowledge this is not easy. Trust is difficult. So we ask for your mercy and your grace in our lives that we might find the trust in you that we need to be able to follow well and find the rest and refreshment that you promise. And in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing our last hymn this morning. Trust and obey.
encourage you to take a little bit of time this afternoon and find some rest and refreshment. Take the cares and the things that are weighing you down and just leave them with Jesus for at least a little bit and remind yourself that he's in control and we can trust. And that's a blessing. I hope that's refreshing for you. It's been good to be with you today and worship together. And we'll look forward to the days as they come where we can begin to do more. And, but until then, we'll see you all next week. Don, would you pray for us as we leave?